Assalamu alaikum and hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to discuss about depreciation. So before that you must know the meaning of depreciation and how to calculate depreciation at the date of purchase and at the date of selling the asset. What is the definition of depreciation? Based on FRS financial reporting standard, depreciation defined as the systematic allocation of the depreciable amount of an asset over its useful life. The general entry for depreciation, debit, depreciation, expense, and credit accumulated depreciation. There are two accounts involved when complete depreciation. Number one, depreciation expense account that we must record in the profit or loss statement as an expense. And another one, accumulated depreciation that is contrary to fixed assets account and must be recorded in the credit side and must be reported in financial position as non-current asset. When we prepare profit or loss or income statement for the year ended 31st December, we must record the depreciation expense in the expenses. So we must record depreciation expense under profit or loss or statement of income. Okay, this is the financial position statement. We must record the accumulated depreciation. It must contract to fixed asset. Now we look at the machine, 8,700, and accumulated depreciation must must contract to machine or you must less from machine less accumulated depreciation then you get the answer you get the amount 7830 so we want to count when we want to calculate our computing depreciation there are two basis monthly or yearly monthly basis when we want to purchase the fixed asset, we must calculate depreciation from the date of purchase until the date of ending accounting period. So you can see that from 1st till 15, we must calculate full month. And from 16 until 31st of the month, we must not calculate for that month and another one we want to calculate depreciation when we sell the fixed asset so we have to calculate depreciation from beginning of accounting period until the selling date so from first until 15 of the month we must not calculate are not included for that month but we must include full month for the date 16 until 31st of the month that one is for selling so for purchasing we must calculate depreciation from purchasing date until the end of accounting period and for selling date we must calculate depreciation from the beginning of accounting period until the selling date. Look at the example. Purchase fixed asset using straight line method monthly basis. Number one, if an asset purchased on January 2nd, 2019 and year ended at 31st December 2019, so we have to calculate depreciation from January until December 2019. So 12 over 12 times 130,000, that one is the cost of asset, less RM10,000 residual value divided by 10 years. So 
the depreciation expense RM12,000. And the second one, uh, this is the journal entry for depreciation debit depreciation expense and credit accumulated depreciation 12,000. Now, number two, if an asset purchased on 20th January 2019 and year ended at 31st December 2019, so we have to calculate depreciation from the date of purchase until the end of accounting period. So we must start with February until December and exclude January, the month of January. Now we can find out that 11 over 12 times the cost less the ratio value divided by 10 years useful life and we get the answer RM11,000. So the journal entry, debit depreciation expense, credit accumulated depreciation, RM11,000. So you can see the month of January, the first one, 2nd of January, we must include for January. The second example, 20th January, we must exclude 20th. We must exclude the month of then January. Selling fixed asset using straight line method, monthly basis. If an asset sold on July 2nd, 2019 and year ended at 31st December 2019, we have to calculate depreciation when the asset sold. So we must calculate from January until June and we must exclude for the month of July. So we have 6 over 12 and times 130,000 the cost of the asset less residual value 10,000 divided by useful life 10 years. And we get the answer RM6000. So the double entry at the date of selling asset July 2nd debit depreciation and credit Accumulated depreciation, 6000 And the second one, if an asset sold on 20th July 2019 and year ended at 31st December 2019, we have to calculate depreciation. So we must calculate from January until July. So we must include the month of July. So... The calculation is 7 out of 12 times 130,000 for cost less residual value 10,000 divided by 10 years and you get RM7000. And when we record in the journal entry, adjusted journal entry, debit, depreciation for the date of selling an asset, credit, Accumulated depreciation, 7,000. So you can see the difference for July. The first one, July 2nd. And the second one, July 20th. And the first one, we must exclude for the month of the July. And for the second one, we must include the month of July. Now we look at the yearly basis for purchasing year and also for selling year. For purchasing year, we must calculate full year of depreciation and for selling year, there is no depreciation for the sale of the asset. The first one, purchase fixed asset using straight line method yearly basis. If an asset purchase on January 2nd, 2019 and year ended at 31st December, we must calculate for one year of purchasing. So, from January to December 12 over 12 times 130,000 for the cost of asset less residual value RM10,000 divided by 10 years. 
and you get the answer RM12000. So we must record for the date of 31st December debit depreciation and credit accumulated depreciation. So this is the yearly basis we must calculate from January until December. If we purchase July 2nd, we also have to calculate for one year from January until December. The second one, you purchase July 20th and year ended at 31st December. So based on yearly basis, straight line method, we must calculate from January until December 12 over 12 times RM 130,000 less RM 10,000 divided by 10 years and you still get the same answer because we use yearly basis where we must calculate depreciation for one year and debit depreciation, credit accumulated depreciation RM 12 now, when selling fixed asset using straight line method yearly basis, if an asset sold on July 2019 and year ended at 31st December 2019, so based on yearly basis, no, no depreciation is calculated for the year or for the selling year. 2019 and depreciation of asset sold is calculated until December 2018 only. That's all. Don't forget to watch my next video and don't forget to subscribe, like and share. Thank you.